Hey all, welcome to the Slayer Podcast. I'm your host, Bill Ayer, owner of Slayer Duck Calls, a company founded on family heritage, unrivaled quality craftsmanship, and an uncontrollable obsession for hunting. Let's get to it. All right, we're here with Richard Tilton on the Slayer uh, Podcast. Hey Richard, how's it going? Doing well, how are you? Doing pretty good. Can't complain. So yeah, I just wanted to to, uh, introduce Richard Tilton. He was the first person to kill a, a bull with a Slayer uh, bugle. So I think they, Richard, did they, did they name your bull the uh, Slayer One Bull or something like that? Yeah, Slayer One Bull right off the bat. Um, <laughs> it was, it was, it was pretty cool, man. It was, uh, yeah, he, Jesse threw it out there, says, hey, this is Slayer One Bull. And I was like, all right, that's the name. So, yeah, so for, it will uh, forever be the Slayer One Bull. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, so Rich, why don't you tell us a little bit about you, you know, where you live and what you do for a living and how long you've been elk hunting and all that good stuff. All right, so let's see, uh, I live in Boise, Idaho. Uh, I was born and raised here. You know, I, uh, most part, I've been welding my whole life. Uh, I went to school in Montana for quite a few years and uh, tried to get away from welding and that didn't happen. So I came <laughs> back into welding. You know, when I turned 18, I worked for an outfitter for a year learned some things. Uh, I grew up kind of hell hunting with my old man and my uncle and their friends. And when I turned 18, I kind of wanted to learn a different way, I guess you'd say. Um, you know, we always uh, drove around in the truck and hopefully they crossed the road kind of deal growing up. And yeah. so when I turned 18, I, I got an uncle that lived in Chalice and he got me hooked up with an outfitter, Horse Creek Outfitters. So I went and worked with them for a season and I learned a lot, man. I Spent, I think we were out in the Frank Church for, I would say, five months, something like that. Oh, wow. And it was awesome. I loved every second of it. You know, first time being away from home, it was a little tough. But uh, being up in the woods and, you know, seeing the wildlife, and it was pretty cool. And uh, so, I, uh, yeah, I did that and came back here. And, you know, I, I, I hunted, you know, I was more of a weekend hunter. Up until I would say my mid twenties, actually, I never really quite, quite got into it. Cause I was, I was into other stuff. I was into skydiving and rock climbing and stuff like that. And so I think about the time I hit, you know, my late twenties, I really started digging elk hunting and uh, I wanted to learn to call. And Were you always a bow hunter or were you, were you rifle hunting? I was always a rifle guy, but I, uh, I would actually go out with friends and bugle for them. I, I, you know, I liked the bugle. I had one of those primos, you know, I, I call it the straw, but um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. one weekend my, I had a buddy, he's like, Hey, let's go out. Let's go out. And so we went out and, and uh, he had a camera and uh, a couple other friends tagged along and I bugled in like nine bulls in one day. I mean, 20 yards, you know, got most of them on camera, got most, a lot of pictures of them. And, uh, so I went back to work the next day and all the guys at work were uh, archery hunters and kind of showed them pictures, showed them videos. And they're like, dude, why aren't you archery hunting? Yeah. Where were you? Can you tell me exactly where? <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good try though. Yeah. yeah and so I kind of got hooked up with some buddies through uh, work and they kind of sent me out to a uh, archery shop here in town and, and, uh, yeah, I just kind of started learning on my own. They all kind of quit work. And so I kind of just self-taught myself archery, I'm not the greatest shot. I'm not the greatest, you know, archery hunter, but I, uh, I have a lot of fun doing it. And I, uh, yeah, I mean, I solo hunted for quite a few years doing that. How old kinda, are you now? I am 36. Okay. Um, so, you're, so you're hunting about what? Both so I've, six yeah, I've been archery hunting since 2017. Oh, okay, I got it. When I picked up my first bow, um, I had one guy go out with me one year, and then we didn't see a whole lot. So I just been kind of doing it solo, you know. I when I I'm the kind of guy if I jump into something, I jump in both feet, and I started doing everything I could possibly do to learn how to do this. Um, I've I've always been a, a kind of a, I've always loved the mountains. I've always loved hunting in general you know, bear, deer, elk, I was determined to learn how to elk hunt. You know, I, I didn't really know anybody that was 
I, I guess you'd say as good as, you know, those guys on YouTube, you know, Ryan Lampers and Corey Jacobson and all those guys. Yeah. But I wanted, I always wanted to be kind of like that, you know, that knowledge. So I went out, and, man, I, I tried and tried and tried. It wasn't until last year I met Jesse Hill. That guy just, he changed the game for me, you know. <laughs> And you and you just uh, met him randomly up hunting. Yeah. <laughs> so he uh it was kind of funny. I was actually up there the day before he was. I was up by myself, just waiting for a buddy to get up there. So I went up for the day and I did this humongous thing, like 12 mile loop. I got into one bowl on that 12 mile <laughs> and I, I I screwed it up, completely screwed it up. And uh so I, I hiked some more and right at the end of the day, I'm I'm coming off this hill and I'm right below the hill which is a big hill um, is uh, you can see the camp. And so I was just kind of, you know, glassing for deer mostly, you know, at the end of the day there. And I see this humongous camper come in and the guy parks right in front of my camp, my, my tent and my truck. And he's there for like 20 minutes. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, what's this guy doing? <laughs> you know, so I was like, well, well, hopefully he moves when I get down there. So I ended up hiking. It took me like 45 minutes to get off this mountain down to my down, you know, to the flat there. And by the time I got down there, he was backing it into his spot and everything. And it's kind of spark, you know, it's Jesse. He sparks up a conversation with you know anybody. He's just a super friendly guy that way. So he starts talking to me and I start talking to him. And you know, I told him I was like, I saw one bull and couldn't really get on it. And and so uh Next thing you know, he's, you know, he's like, well, why don't you come over and have some, have some grub, you know, eat some dinner. And he's like, I'm waiting for a, a, another guy uh, to get up here. And so I told him, I was like, I got to go make a phone call. Got to go call my, my kid and got to call, call my brother real quick. And so I left for like an hour, came back and all of a sudden uh, his buddy was up there and uh, Tommy Sessions, man, heck of a caller. <laughs> um, yeah. I haven't heard Tommy call, but uh, Jesse says you he heard Tommy call one hell of a, a caller he is amazing you know he called my bull in last year yeah he's a super good dude and he his calling is top notch you know i mean he's he's got one of the best buckles i think i've ever heard it, it's amazing he's just it's just a natural thing for him he's lucky that way yeah. and it, it's, it's i actually wouldn't say it's luck it's still he's he's good yeah they they invited me to go uh elk hunt with him next thing i know i my buddy shows up and i'm like hey we're gonna watch a movie with these guys we're gonna go elk hunt with them tomorrow <laughs> yeah it was it was kind of a a spare you know it just it was random it was kind of cool how i met him so uh yeah i'm real grateful for it you know yeah. um, and, that, and that's last year right yeah that was last year okay i mean you know the guy i ended up hunting with him for the, the entire next week as well we him and i kind of kicked it off really good you know we kind of he he started bugling i mean right off the bat the next day him and tommy start bugling and all of a sudden you know a solid you know solid 330 bull answers off right off the truck and we ended up chasing that one for a while and never get never got to it just the wind wind was not right but uh yeah, I couldn't believe it. Like right off the bat, you know, that never happens to me. That never happened, you know, and uh, it was pretty cool. I mean, you know, yeah. and the biggest bull I've ever seen you know, in the wild. But yeah. Um, so did you guys ever uh, kill? Ended up hunting house? the rest of the day with them. We did like eight miles. Kill it. Oh, um, so my buddy ended up shooting a uh, a young bull in uh, that day. We went out. It, it, it was uh, basically a calf is what you ended up shooting. But we called in lots of bulls. I had a – Jesse got me drawn on a pretty good bull middle of the day. Uh, 60 yards, I just didn't have a shot. But, yeah, I, you know, these, these guys, they they changed the way I elk hunt. That's for sure. Real aggressive, you know, different kind of style of elk hunting. You know, it was really cool. When you say aggressive, uh, tell us a little bit about that. I think I'm probably in the same boat. I play a pretty conservative game when it comes to elk hunting with a bow i know i've duck hunted a lot with jesse and i know he's very aggressive um as far as his his calling and the way that he goes about it Mm -hmm. Uh, so i'd be curious to see what your thoughts are and how you were doing it and when you say aggressive how how they were doing it so 
I used to get on uh, anything I can think of to try to learn how to, you know, how to call the right way to call. Uh, you know, I won't name any programs, but um, a lot of guys out there on YouTube and, and they have little memberships and deal. But, you know, when I, I started hunting with Jesse and I, I told him, I was like, you know, I'll call and I, I you know, I, I, I don't do it very loud. I try to, I try to, you know, be the, the quiet guy and, you know, it, it's, it's kind of, I don't know. I just didn't, you know, I, I wasn't, you know, the best way he kind of put it is when he told me he's very aggressive. I, I didn't quite understand. Like, what do you mean aggressive? And he's, he, he, the way he put it and he's like, you've been to a bar. I'm like, yeah, I'm, you know, 30 something years old. And he's like, if you, you walk into a bar, how many people turn their heads, you know? And, and I'm like, not very many. I'm not a big guy. I'm pretty average, you know, five ten. And I'm like, not very many. And he says, okay, if Arnold Schwarzenegger walks into a bar, how many people are going to turn their heads? And I'm like, everybody. He says, be Arnold Schwarzenegger on your calling. He says, be aggressive, be loud, look for a fight. So I, you know, I thought about that and I kind of watched him and Tommy, how they call and dude, they are loud. They are, they are screaming. They are, I mean, they're lip balling They're, and it's every hundred yards. You know, I wasn't used to that. I was used to, you know, given that locator bugle, nothing. Okay. We wait, you know, a half an hour, 45 minutes. And these guys are every hundred yards. They're screaming their heads off. They're walking through the hills, kicking rocks and breaking branches. And I mean, they sound like, sound like a damn herd going through the woods. <laughs> and so it was, you know, it was different. It was, it was a lot different than what I was used to. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Well, let's kick into this year. So tell us, you know, so it sounds like you might've hooked back up with Jesse. Did you guys hunt this, the same camp that you're at? Yeah, we did. Yeah. We hunted the same camp. You know, they, they, they were up there for about three days before I got up there. When I got up there, they didn't hear a whole lot. They hunted some different areas. And so I kind of mentioned like, Hey, let's go back to the, the ridge that I shot my bull last year on, you know, that Tommy called in for me. And uh, so they, you know, they were kind of out of ideas, I think. And so they said, all right, let's try that ridge. So we get uh, the next day, we get on this ridge. Uh, you got to go up and over the summit, kind of. It's like a 500 foot elevation climb. And then it's probably three quarters of a mile in, you know. And uh, you go up and over and you just drop way down. You drop like a thousand feet down, get into this really gnarly hole. Well, as we were dropping down, Tommy was below Jesse and I, I mean, first light, Jesse and I, we hear Tommy bugle. We thought he was just trying to bugle and we look over and coming down the saddle on the other side is a uh, pretty, I'd say eight or nine cows, you know, next thing we hear, we hear a bull down bugling down in the bottom. So, you know, obviously we were into them already. We found some elk, you know, right off the bat first thing in the morning. But the thing is you got to go down to the bulls. And the thermals were going that way. Yeah. We ended up hanging out for, I would say, at least an hour and a half. <laughs> Wait, because we were on the north north yeah. face of the slope. The wind just would not change for us. Those thermals just kept going down. And so we ended up hanging out. And after a little while, we kind of started to push push the envelope a little bit. We kind of got bored, I think. And Jesse and Tommy decided, okay, let's, let's go down a little bit. And, um, we got into some pretty gnarly brush. Tommy was kind of hung out about 50 yards or so behind Jesse and I, Jesse and I kind of hung out about 50 yards apart. We had, we had elk right below us. Um, there was, we had a spike come running out in front of us and he came running through and then a couple of cows behind him, you know, there was no shot on anything. And, and this year I was kind of de- determined to, uh, I was going to shoot a branch antler bull, you know, last year I, they called the spike in for me last weekend, shot the spike. And so they kind of, I guess they looked at me and they're, you know, I was like, no, I'll spike, you know, and they saw the cows. And so I told them, no, I'm not going to shoot a cow. So these bulls are these, these elk come running through and, and uh, we had no shot. It was so thick. And so we kind of regathered a little bit and decided that we're going to go down a little bit further and chase some more of these bulls. And man, there was on our way down, there was rubs everywhere. Some of the biggest and tallest rubs I've ever seen. I mean, 16 inch trees in diameter were, were rubbed off, you know, eight feet up. It was amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, it was cool. I, you know, I kept taking pictures of them and 
you know, Tommy's yelling at me like, Hey, let's go. (laughs) I'm a picture guy. I like to take pictures. And so we get going down and we kind of get on some bulls again. And, but you know, they, they just, they aren't coming up. You know what I mean? They're, you know, I'd say within a hundred yards of us, but they will not just come up out of the bottom down there, but they're answering, which is good. You know, that's more than Tommy and Jesse's heard all weekend. You know, it was a good four hours into the hunt and, and it was, I think it was probably getting around about 11 o'clock and we decided, to, you know, we were kind of getting hungry and, you know, we were chasing these bulls, but they were going they were, they were going down, we were going down, they just wouldn't come up to us. And uh, we'd run into some cows every so often. And so we decided to eat some lunch. I think Jesse, Jesse knows I don't sit well, you know, I, I get antsy once I start sitting down unless I'm napping. And he was pretty tired. Tommy was pretty tired. And I wasn't. <laughs> They've been hunting for three days. I haven't. Jesse told me, hey, why don't you go over there and we'll do some calling and something comes in, you'll have first shot at it, you know. And so I was like, okay, you know, it's kind of like getting rid of your kid, you know, go <laughs> walk through that timber or something. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so I, I was over there for about, I would say, 45 minutes. And they were snoozing. And uh, I look over and I see a bull coming down the hill about probably about 400 yards away, 300 yards away. I could see it's a branch antler bull, but I couldn't tell how big it was, you know, decently wide, but not huge. So I run over to Tommy because I didn't bring my binos, grab his binos. By that time, the bull ducked into the timber. And so we decided, okay, we woke Jesse up and kind of got everything going. We knew there was that bull and another bull over there. So we decided let's, let's go after these guys it was it was thick some thick timber man it was real thick and we we got up in there and we got calling and there was a small ravine you know uh, or uh, we were right on top of this finger you know in this drainage and this this bull would not come past this little ravine or this drainage this creek bottom we kind of hung out and we're sitting there calling at him and he's you know he's bugling right back at us and he's chuckling at us and Tommy's giving them chuckles and bugling right back at him, lip on him. And, and Jesse's to the left of me. I mean, we're, we're right next to each other. We're looking across this ravine. I've got my, I've got an arrow knocked because I'm, we're pretty sure something's going to come in, but we're not sure when. Next thing you know, Jesse's like, bull, bull, bull. And I look over and there's this bull coming in silent. It's to the left of me, which is, right in my way where Jesse's at. So, you know, all, all Jesse says is kill that bull, kill that bull. <clears throat> and uh, I didn't have time to yard it, do a yardage on it or nothing. And so did Jesse, I, Jesse lay down or something. Nope. So Jesse just leans back. I, I draw back and I, I, I got a pretty quick shot. And so I draw back and I, and Jesse, thinks the bull is about 50 yards he yells 50 at me and I'm like no thinking in my head that's not 50 yards so I pull back I get on the bull and I'm about three inches from his nose my broadhead <laughs> and, uh, and you can see Jesse he just kept thinking don't sneeze don't sneeze <laughs> and I draw back I get on the bull I put I put it right at 35 yards and I don't have a shot at a broad side it's a looking directly straight at me and I, I'm pretty good at judging yardage and I'm a pretty decent shot so I I'm like I can hit that so I I center punch him I normally don't take that shot but I was pretty confident at the time just because that shot can go very bad very quickly but I was pretty confident and I had the shot and so I took it and released and that thing perfectly I mean it 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 drilled him Jesse looks at me and just nice shot (laughs) (laughs) that thing runs off you know and he looks back at Tommy and we we thought it was a five by five is what we thought all we had really time to do was notice it was branch antler bull Um, and that's all I was after you know Jesse and Tommy they they go for the big boys they've shot a lot of elk in their years I haven't so I kind of just wanted to branch antler. So Tommy comes down to us, man. He's, you know, we give each other knuckles. Jesse gives me a hug, man. I'm, we're, I'm, I'm stoked. 
<clears throat> and then Jesse hears, Jesse's got this key hearing, man. I, I've never met anybody that can hear like he can. And he hears it, you know, gurgle a little bit. And then he, he looks at me and he says, that thing just fell. He says, that's a dead bull. My, you know, welding my whole life and working in fab shops. So my hearing's not the best. And I'm like, you sure? And he's like, yeah, let's go, let's go get your bull. So we walk up to where I shot it. Him, Tommy, go ahead. And I'm kind of looking for my arrow, thinking it might be right in there. And so they go ahead of me and the mountain is just sprayed with blood. It's just painted red, you know, and it's the good colored blood. And we, we get looking, I think we walked maybe 25 yards. Oh, wow. And he, there, there he was. Tommy looks at me and he's just got, gets this big grin on his face. And then Jesse looks at me and, and I'll, I'll never forget their face. They were so happy for me. There he was laying there. And I think he went 15 yards and then rolled five. It was it was a perfect shot. Uh, we never found the arrow. We think it was in his intestines. We're not too sure. I mean, it was in his guts or something. But uh, that bullet they had bugling, it was still bugling. So Tommy and Jesse were like, "Hey, you good?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm good, man. Go go get your bull." <laughs> <laughs> so they kind of took off, and I kind of went to work on it. They came back about 15 minutes later. Yeah, and they kind of helped me. Uh, we quartered the rest of the thing out and took some pictures and that's when jesse was like this is slayer one bull i'm like slayer one and he's like what do you mean he's like it's the first bull killed with the slayer tube and i'm like i you know i was like all i was all stoked i was real excited i was like sweet man (laughs) it's funny because there were some really good hunters out there with with slayer bugle tubes Um, we had a couple guys from uh, cryptech using it down in arizona too and about four days after you killed your bull Butch killed a bull using a, the Slayer call uh, nice. down in Arizona. Oh, nice, probably like 320, 340 bull. Oh, wow. Um, but yeah, so you you beat all, you you beat the good guy, you know, guys that have been elk hunting for a lot of years and killing a lot of bulls, you, you beat them to them. So. That's awesome. Yeah, we we figured it was uh, six hours into our hunt. Yeah, that's awesome. So good <laughs> job, man. Congratulations. That sounds like an awesome time. And congratulations to, to – Tommy and, and Jesse too, you know, cause I know they put a lot of work into that and a lot of work. Great job. Couldn't have done it without those guys. That's for sure. Well, cool. How was the hike out? So you had to go a thousand feet back up and then 500 feet back down the other side or. No. So we actually, um, we ended up hiking to the bottom. We, we hunted out. We don't just cause one guy gets a bull doesn't mean we're done for the day. And yeah. so we kept on bugling and we bugled bulls all day long. How down through the bottom. Uh, all the way to the bottom and out, man. So we went to the bottom and there's a trailhead at the bottom. And then it's another, uh, I think, six miles out after that. Yeah. And so we actually, we went two miles and then uh, hit hit a creek. And I mean, you know, before we even hit the trailhead, uh, we were in headlamps. You know, it was it was pretty dark by that point. And, but we got down the last four miles. We actually dumped the, dumped the meat in uh, next to the creek, hung it up and everything. And you know, we made sure we were, it was a nice, cool, cool spot. And we kind of hiked out in the dark without the bull. And then uh, the next day, Tommy and Jesse, they went up again, kind of in the same area, just a different, different ridge, I guess. And so I actually went in by myself to hike the bull out, you know, and uh, they were going to bring it out with them. But I was like, nah, I'll, I'll go in there and get it. So actually on my way out, they were on the bikes and uh, they came, they came out, they saw me hiking it. They kind of took the rest of the, the rest of the meat and everything. And so I just went back and ended up hiking the head out the four miles, but they got the meat out for me, which was really cool. That's an awesome story. And uh, so is that your second uh, bull? That's the se- yeah. Second bull with, uh, with my bow. I mean, he was a four by four or five by five. Four by four is what he ended up being. Okay. He was a nice bull. I remember seeing the picture you guys sent over. Yeah. You know, he had really good genetics are up there. And yeah, I was, I was, I couldn't ask for a better time, a better bull and better friends, you know, <laughs> it, it was, it was, it was a highlight of my year. That's for sure. Uh, that's cool. And uh, yeah, Jesse is, is one heck of a guy. I, I goose hunted with Josh, right? I always want to call him Josh. It's uh, Tommy. I don't know why I was going Josh, but Tommy, I've goose hunted with him once and he's a super nice guy too, but yeah. I've got to know Jesse uh, well over the past few years and uh, 
there's there's probably not a better person on earth than than he is and i mean he just has he just wants to help people which you don't find too much in hunters um these days right everybody wants to keep everything secret and keep it to themselves and he's very uh very helpful and always willing like he's always told me like hey man i mean anytime you want to come hunt with us just let me know and i I would love to because i think there's i mean I, i don't think i know there's a ton i can learn from him and the guys that he hunts with you know you never get too old to, to keep learning. You never stop. You never stop. Well, awesome. I really appreciate you coming on and telling your story. You know, I, you know, your story is, is so relevant to what we do. You know, I think 4% of hunters in Idaho are successful counter tags. I mean, you guys aren't, you guys are over the counter. You guys are, are hunting public land. I think 4% of us are, are uh, successful every year. So you know, you're, you're up in the elite group when you, when you get to kill a bull. So that's, that's the goal, you know? Yeah. That's the goal. So it enables the rest of us who didn't get a bull to vicariously live through your guys' stories. So I appreciate you coming on and, and telling that. No, thank you. You know, we had a, a lot of close encounters this year. Um, one with a really big bull, a 350, 360 class bull. Nice. And uh, just could not get him to commit. His cows kept walking one way. He kept wanting to come in on us. And uh, every time he would, he'd, his cows would get too far away and he'd turn and kind of go back with them. Mm-hmm. But uh, so it was one of those deals most of our season. But uh, yeah, so, so awesome to hear your success and, and know you put one on the ground, which is very cool. Well, awesome, Richard. We appreciate it. Anything else you, you wanted to say? Ah, about it, man. That's, that's, all i got (laughs) all right well thanks for joining the slayer podcast and uh, i'm looking forward to hearing more stories about the slayer bugle tube and uh you killing bulls next year it's got to be a five point or better absolutely (laughs) thank you put the pressure on you all right take care thanks